Good morning. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Um, this is Monday, April 20th. And uh, as we continue our uh, time dealing with the coronavirus outbreak, uh, we've taken time to do Facebook Live interviews with a number of key people around Westchester County. And we've made it a point of reaching out to the mayors of our major communities to talk about what's happening in their area. It's pretty clear that the urban centers of Westchester County are the most hardest hit by the coronavirus uh, outbreak. It affects everybody in every corner of the county, but certainly as we've had uh, with, with uh, Yonkers and White Plains and New Rochelle, uh, a concentration of that, of that uh, situation. And one area that uh, we wanna talk about today is with our guest, Mayor Sean Patterson Howard. Uh, three and a half months on the job. Sean, Madam Mayor, welcome. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. How does it feel to uh, have this happen in such a short time in your tenure? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, um, Executive Latimer, for having me on. Look, no one planned for this. So whether you've been in office for 10 years and you're a veteran or you're just coming in new, um, this is a shock to everyone. And so what I can say is that I have enjoyed having my other municipal leaders around to help, you know, for us to work together through this. So I'm not doing it on my own. The county has been a great help. Uh, the state has been a great help. Uh, I'm working with an incredible team here. So if we have to have a crisis, I am good. I'm happy to be surrounded by people that have been very welcoming and and very supportive. We're we're struggling through this together. Well, we're happy to have your leadership, the council, and the other elected officials together. Lyndon Williams here in White Plains, Joe, um, David Tubiolo, Gary yes. Pretlow, uh, and the crew. Um, Mount Vernon, 65,000 people to give a round number, maybe a little higher than that, 68,000, uh, is uh, compressed into four square miles. And that yes. makes it the most densely populated community in Westchester County. And that's been reflected by the high number of positives per square mile, and unfortunately, the high number of deaths. How are you handling it? What's, what's your administration's strategy been in trying to deal with this, uh, this horrific outbreak? Well, like you said, no one ever expected for us to be dealing with um, fatality management, but that is a true issue that we are working through. So we are working with our different faith-based organizations, our different funeral homes, um, our nursing homes, the hospital, just to provide support and service. We've been doing a lot of outreach and support to families. Um, as, we've already, as we already know, we have refrigerated trucks um, behind the hospital and we've uh, set up extra morgue space in the county and so the number of fatalities is staggering I don't think it's anything we've ever experienced in our lifetime and prayerfully we will never experience it again um, but this is the new normal for right now and and so we are trying to find innovative ways to support families especially because they cannot gather and that is so troublesome as, as people are dealing with their families in the hospital or in the nursing homes and their inability to see them and trying to figure out creative ways how to advocate for them while they're unable to um, go to the hospitals has has been a lot of the work that we're just trying to help support people through now you've been an outspoken um, advocate for additional testing. And yes. in Mount Vernon up until I guess last Friday, there hadn't been an official test site. Now at the Mount Vernon Neighborhood Health Center on East 4th Street, uh, something that you've advocated for has come to pass. How do you view that site as helping you uh, manage as best as anybody can this outbreak? And, and what other uh, things are you advocating for? What other innovative ways do you see to flatten the curve? So, you know, along with our, our senators, uh, Biagi and Bailey, we wrote a letter to the governor and to the State Department of Health and our Senator Andrea Stewart-Cousins, our Senate Majority Leader, as well as our Assemblyman Pretlow continue to push those efforts. And on Friday, we opened up a testing site. We have the capacity to test up to 125 people today. The Neighborhood Health Center is an incredible partner. Um, as we look at the numbers that we receive, from the county each day. The one thing that we really, really noticed um, as numbers were growing in buildings, we were seeing them all in the wealthier parts of Mount Vernon. <laughs> numbers in, in wealthier parts, whether it's Fleetwood or Lincoln Avenue, um, but in more of the north side apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. And what was very surprising is that we did not see clusters developing in our public housing. <laughs> Or our, you okay? Or our affordable housing 
um, complexes. And for us, that just let us know that they really didn't have access to testing. It's not that people don't, are not positive there. It's just that they're not being tested. And so we're not able to track. And that's the most densely populated part of our city. So if people in the most yeah, densely yeah. populated part of our city are not being tested and they're living in one and two and three bedroom apartments and not houses, they don't have backyards and, and places that they can go, then this is a real problem. And so hopefully we will be able to reach out and help them get tested so we really know how to manage this in all parts of our community. It'll as give us the data we need. As you travel around Mount Vernon, to what degree do you see people being conscious of social distancing? To what degree do you see people wearing masks in, in appropriate settings to uh, try to reduce the spread? Well, the masks, I am proud to say, are definitely um, much more common. I'm happy that the governor did issue the order that everyone should be wearing masks, especially if you're going into stores and supermarkets. So we're seeing that. Um, I guess one of the most challenging areas that we've seen is right around bodegas, uh, where people like to congregate or, or corner stores. But other than that, we have, a, we have what we call a social distancing task force and an essential business task force. And that's police, fire, that's Office of Emergency Management and some of our other staff throughout the city that just go around and continue to do education around social distancing and help people move and, and separate. But we also go into the businesses to ensure that they are enforcing social distancing practices within their businesses. And if they're not, um, and after we speak to them, we will find them. And so the businesses are much more cooperative now <laughs> as they understand that we are watching and that we will find them or we will challenge them uh, and able to stay open because they cannot threaten public health. One store, a few stores said, well, we don't have security management. Well, you need to get them. Um, ask your corporate headquarters to send someone here to help you, but you need to manage and monitor the number of people that are in the store. Uh, and you know, this is the cost of business right now. And, and actually, you were a leader in uh, highlighting this issue uh, before the governor acted and questions of beauty salons and barbershops and uh, places like that. Now, I don't go to many beauty salons or nail salons, but I do remember growing up in Mount Vernon, the barbershops were a place of uh, conversation and gathering. And yes. it's kind of hard to break yourself out of those habits, but you understood fairly early on that that was an area where the spread could, could occur. Absolutely. Well, I've worked in public health since 1985. I've been really involved and sat on different committees and worked with population health with the County Department of Health. Um, I've worked closely with the State Department of Health around equity and disproportionality. And so understanding um, public health and infectious disease is just part of my professional background. So that gave me a strategic advantage in understanding that challenge. And I know I don't want to look too far ahead uh, because we're still very much grappling with the realities of the health uh, care crisis here. But coming right behind it or with it concurrently is the crisis of our economics. And mm. we're all mindful of the fact that the shutdown of the society has hurt individuals, small businesses, big businesses, governments, churches, you name it. What kind of things do you envision for the economic recovery of Mount Vernon, depending on the time frame that we can start moving in that direction? Well, I think the first month we were really trying to catch our balance around the health crisis. But in the past week or two, the conversations have become more bifurcated in how we continue to manage this, but how we also think about economic recovery. Um, Mount Vernon is a minority majority community. We already have high rates of poverty. Um, many urban centers will be the hardest hit and also experience the hardest recovery efforts. And so we have to look at that. Um, we have started having conversations with our business community. We did a Zoom meeting last week with the boards, with the chairs of our zoning board, our planning board, um, our architectural review board to figure out how we can continue to keep projects going and making sure that when it's time to reopen, we're ready. We are going to pull together our Chamber of Commerce as well as our Merchants Association. But one of the things that I was doing, thankfully, as part of my transition is that I had a economic um, development board. 
and, and a finance and operations board. And so we're going to reconvene them through Zoom and things of this nature because we had already been developing a plan for the economic development of Mount Vernon. And we'll just pull recovery into that at the same time. But it is going to be challenging. It is going to be daunting. Like the county, sales tax, of course, is almost all but gone and parking uh, that revenue is gone, and as you are, as homeowners are losing their jobs, um, getting homeowner taxes in is is a challenge. Uh, and honestly, right now we don't have a controller who is working with us at all, so it's it's really hard for us to know our financial position and and plan for our future when we are not aware of what we are dealing with downstairs in the controller's office. So that's a challenge. That's a unique challenge that Mount Vernon has right now. Uh, Madam Mayor, let me ask two other questions, <clears throat> not directly related to coronavirus, but things that are of great importance both to the county and to the city. The first one is the 2020 census. We yes. know that now that we're all in a need for federal uh, assistance to the extent that the state can provide any assistance, so much of it's based on our population. And uh, both Mount Vernon and the county at large can make an honest case that in 2010, we were undercounted compared to the number of people that, that lived here. So the census is underway. We just last week transitioned from just responding by electronic means to now being responded to in the mail capacity. We haven't yet reached the point at which census takers will interact with you at your front door. Bad time to do that right now. What thoughts do you have about uh, how Mount Vernon is responding so far where you think it can respond on the census? So Mount Vernon um, right now has the lowest response rate in the county and, and traditionally that has been the issue. And we've been working very hard to devise a strategy um, to improve our response rate. And a lot of that involved the churches and setting up census hubs in the community. Um, so with social distancing right now and, and coronavirus, virus, it's a challenge, but we're gonna have to get back out there soon um, as this kind of lifts up just a little bit and, and be creative um, and go out to the supermarkets and just put up stands and work with people around the paper census, giving out information, handing out leaflets and pamphlets, almost like it's a political campaign. We're gonna have to go door to door and do really creative methods um, of at least giving out educational information. We know they can go to mycensus2020.gov and fill it out. Um, we know that 19 hours a day from 7 a.m. to 2 a.m., they can call 1-844-330-2020 and have someone help them um, over the phone answer the census. And now, as you said, the paper censuses are being delivered to people in their homes. Uh, and we're going to do some online webinars just to help people uh, walk through that process. Every Friday, we have different DJs that are coming on to our Facebook Live pages and, and encouraging people to do the census. We're doing some calling campaigns. We will start robocall campaigns. We are working with the school district and the PTA for them to do robocalls and reach out within the schools because the schools uh, depend on this money. So we're, we're trying to help everyone come in as partners. We are a big community of faith. We have a lot of churches. So we will be convening uh, our pastors and different meetings through Zoom and, and conference calls to have them really work with their congregation. So there's a lot that we have to do and definitely not being able to go and knock on doors um, is a challenge or to pull people together in big community settings and have celebrations uh, and get them to complete the census. It is a challenge, but it is more necessary now than ever before because it's gonna impact the money that comes into our community for the next 10 years and we cannot afford to leave anything on the table. Well, we're certainly going to work together with you on that because Mount Vernon's success is the county's success on the census. And the same could be true for Memorial Field, where the county is trying now to honor a commitment that was made, I think, 12 years ago now. Yes. And, uh, and, and get that field back to what it once was. I more often than I should reminisce about growing up in Mount Vernon and uh, being at Memorial Field for a variety of things. Wow. A high school graduation diploma in my hand 50 years ago this June. And, um, you know, was down there for concerts back in the day and other events back in the day. It's laid fallow for 12 years. It looks like we're moving forward on it now. How important is that project to Mount Vernon? Hold on, we have a lot of fire engines going by right now. Um, so, you know, Memorial Field, the community is excited about Memorial Field. 
We were so pleased to hear um, that the final vote went our way last week. Uh, we had organized um, hundreds of people actually to come up to the county building for a public hearing, but with the um, stay at home order and the pause, New York pause, that was canceled. And so we uh, submitted you know, testimony and request in writing. And so thank you so much. We are so grateful to your office, to your incredible team and our County Board of Legislators, our, our city council, our, our state elected officials, they all worked with us. And, and this has been an incredible victory even before we break ground. I mean, like really, really, truly break ground this time. I think the community has become a little bit jaded. They've seen a lot of starts, um, but I am confident that working with the county and what is different this time is the county is the project manager and there has been concerns and people have tried to um, kind of miseducate and misinform the community and say, well, the county, it's the county's project and the county is going to control and run Memorial Field and they're going to take it over and we're not going to have an opportunity for the community to use it. Um, and I know that that's not true. And, and like I said, we have an honest partner and we're not only going to break ground, but I expect within the corrected time frame that we will also be cutting the ribbon and that field will be returned back to the community and the residents of Mount Vernon with the rest of the county being able to access it and use it just like Mount Vernon residents access other communities, physical facilities and, and the county parks. Well, we look forward to both the groundbreaking and uh, if I'm around for it, the scissor cutting, uh, probably an election between me and the scissor cutting. But uh, if you're holding the shears, I'll be there one way or the other. And uh, I think it'll be, uh, it'll be a sign uh, in addition to what Memorial Field means in practical terms, what it means as a recreational facility, adding a skateboard park for kids who do that. I'm not doing that, but the kids can do that today. But uh, it'll also be a symbol that, that both the city and the county can make government work because many times that's really the question in people's minds is does government really function? Does it really accomplish things? And, uh, and I think in and of itself it's important, but it's also symbolic of what it is that uh, our two administrations can accomplish hopefully on the right day when we, can, uh, when we can cut the river that opens it and we can see a football game there, we can see a concert, a graduation, a track meet, all the things that Memorial Field once was. So it'll be the once and future memories of the next generation. So hopefully that's good. Uh, Madam Mayor, any closing words you'd like to share? Well, I want to say this because there were a few people saying, you know, oh my goodness, I heard that you were having troubles getting PPEs. Well, first, I want to thank the county and the state for working with all of the communities through the Office of Emergency Management um, to supply the different communities with some PPEs but all of us know that we need to also um, order on our own. And, and it was a challenge as people around the country were fighting for the PPEs, it was hard to find them. So we had to find creative ways to secure them, but never ever was that an indication that the county was not supportive of that. So I just wanna make sure that that is clear, that you have been a great and an incredible partner in this from the beginning. Thank you not only for PPEs, protective equipment, but thank you for working with us to expand our feeding capacity. We're feeding over 400 individuals daily, breakfast and lunch through our senior meal program and our homebound program. I know that the county is working with us to get a, a refrigeration truck, so thank you. Um, government does work and when we communicate and when we decide to partner and we understand that together everyone achieves more, then it makes a difference. Mount Vernon Hospital right now is still open, but this um, situation demonstrates to us more than any time in history that we need a hospital. We need a fully functioning quality hospital. We are a major city. Um, we have closer to 100,000 people living here and we, we are gonna need the hospital going forward. And so that's a conversation and hopefully we can continue to have. I know that's not within your power, but as long as um, we can have your support and your voice going forward, that is something that will be very important to us. But thank you overall. I am praying for you and your family and your team as you're out there working to stay safe, to stay healthy and to stay blessed. And please let us know how Mount Vernon can support the community because while we have great need, we also have great resources here and we are an asset and not a deficit and we wanna be a great partner, so thank you. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, it, it's an honor to work with you, your administration, the council, the other key officials at state and local levels to try to help Mount Vernon uh, thrive and go forward. Our been council has been very busy and very active and thank you for meeting with them as well. Thank you so much. We've been talking with Mayor Sean Patterson Howard, uh, mayor of the city of Mount Vernon, and uh, we'll continue these dialogues even when the crisis is over. Uh, but for now, we, uh, we look forward to an update about two o'clock uh, on Facebook and perhaps uh, on uh, News 12 as well, let you know where we are statistically, if we're starting to continue to see the flattening and, and maybe even the recession of the curve on coronavirus. I'm George Latimer, Worcester County Executive. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon. Thank you.